Hey folks, I've had some of you ask about this question here. It's a really interesting question where we're asked to use the uh, limit definition of the slope of the tangent line to compute the slope of the tangent line of this function f of x at this point uh, where x is equal to 1. So we would say that the slope of the tangent line uh, is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of, and who's playing the role of a in this case, uh, that would be 1, so f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 all over h. So I'll go ahead and work it this way because this is the way the question asks us to compute the slope, but I would encourage you to, uh, when you get a chance, try the alternate definition for the slope of the tangent line because I think things will work out a little bit easier in, in that case. Uh, just the uh, algebra is a little bit easier than it is for this, uh, uh, for this version of the definition. Okay. So this is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of 1 plus h. Well, that'll be 1 over 5 uh, plus 2 times 1 plus h uh, minus f of 1. Well, that would be 1 over 5 uh, plus 2 times 1 all over h. So what do we got? Well, we've got a mess here. We need to clean it up. Our goal is to be able to use the direct substitution property for limits, and for that to happen, we'll have to cancel out this factor of h right here. So the trick that I recommend for this problem is to try to clear out the smaller fractions. Let's get rid of the smaller fractions in one uh, step. Uh, I actually, before I, before I do that, let's go ahead and simplify this expression here. So this gives us 1 over uh, 5 plus, distributing here gives me 2 plus h minus, and then simplifying this expression, this comes out to be 1 7th, which we actually knew because it actually gave us the entire point that we were looking for. Uh, so we knew that that value was going to simplify to 1 7th all over h. So this gives us the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over 5 plus 2 plus h minus 1 over 7 all over h. And then here's my trick. I want to clear out these fractions here. So let's multiply this expression um, let's multiply this expression by 7 times 5 plus 2 plus h all over 7 times 5 plus 2 plus h. Why did I choose this? Well, I want to clear out these two fractions and the LCD, the least common denominator across these two fractions is this expression here. So let's go ahead and see how this simplifies. So this is equal to the limit as h approaches 0, and in the denominator, I'm going to have h times 7 times 5 plus 2 plus h. That's in my denominator. And then in the numerator, notice what we're going to do here. We're going to distribute this LCD to both terms, and things are going to cancel. We know they're going to cancel because that's why we picked the least common denominator. So notice that when I distribute the LCD, that's this term here in blue, to this first fraction, the factors 5 plus 2 plus h that they both have in common cancel, so I'm just left with 1 times 7. So I've got this 1 times this 7, so that just gives me 7 for the first term. Likewise, when I distribute the LCD, this term in blue here, to the second fraction, the factors of 7 cancel, so I'm left with minus parentheses 5 plus 2 plus h. Okay. Folks, keep in mind this factor right here, these two these two terms can't cancel. Uh, we can't cancel those two terms. I'm going to just have to clean this up. So let's do some uh, uh, distributing upstairs. So we get 7 uh, minus 5 minus 2 minus h all over 7h times 5. Actually, we can simplify that. That's 5 plus 2. Well, that's 7 plus h. And notice that the this 7 here uh, is at, we cancel that out through addition with the negative 5 and the negative 2. So I'm left with the limit as h approaches 0 of just negative h all over 7h times 7 plus h. And now I can go ahead and cancel these two uh, factors of h, the one in the numerator, the one in the denominator. So now I'm left with the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 1 over 7 times 7 plus h. And now the factor, this factor of h right here, which way back at the very beginning was the factor that was preventing me from doing direct substitution, has been canceled out. And now we can evaluate the limit 
through the direct substitution property. So I plug in a zero everywhere I see an H, and we end up with minus one over 49. And that gives, for this particular problem, uh, that gives the slope of the tangent line. We just found that the slope of the tangent line is minus one over 49. Folks, I hope this helps. Uh, let me know if you have any questions on it. Um, yep, thanks.